Minasan konnichiwa! Today I was planning on studying Russian but I don't really have any physical resources for Russian. All of my Russian resources are online and the Wi-Fi isn't really working. So I'm gonna have to change my plan. So I've decided to study Japanese instead today. I am currently working on my Japanese from Zero 2 book but I like every time I want to continue this book there's there's been so much time since I actually studied Japanese I've forgotten so much I feel like I need to revise first so I always end up revising a lot but I don't often get around to actually working in the workbook but now that I have summer holiday that should be fine I think but still I'm going to study once, uh, start once again with just some revision from the first book because just with Japanese I forget so many things so easily. I do notice that like finally on Duolingo finally some things like it starts to take much longer before I actually forget words again but it's it's definitely taking like it definitely I definitely need much more revision for Japanese than any of the other languages that I'm studying probably because I guess this is the only language I'm studying that's not a Indo-European language so I don't know that I don't really that I can't really make any connections between words because often like especially with Swedish Swedish vocabulary is often so easy to learn because like it, it'll either look like a Dutch word or an English word or a German word or it'll sound like one so I can usually just compare those words but with Japanese that's obviously not really the case unless it's like words they borrowed but that's only a fraction of like all of Japanese vocabulary so I'm gonna start with some revision from my notes from the Japanese from Zero book I've written down like the most important grammar points in this jota and it's actually not really that much it's only a couple of pages like i don't know like maybe 10 pages or so so that's not too bad because all the vocabulary from the first book it's on a memorized course that i'm doing i haven't finished that one yet but that's the way i'm like revising my vocabulary for the book but this is more for grammar and some of the phrases that aren't in the memorize course so like I've written down here some like how you can introduce yourself when you're meeting someone new uh, like asking some basic questions that you learn in every language course uh, at the beginning like how old are you I'm this many years old uh, what's your name that kind of stuff some daily greetings uh, some stuff about like saying that you are uh, that you do speak Japanese or that you don't speak Japanese or asking someone if they speak English uh, yeah that kind of stuff really yeah and just some grammar points like um, how kore, are and sore are related to each other like how the ko words like mean close to, close to the speaker uh, the so is a little bit further and the Ah, ones are like the farthest I think so uh, yeah stuff like that some of the particles like no for possessive uh, to for with uh, va as topic marker uh, and wo as the object marker I think especially the phrases I yeah I think I remember a lot of these because like especially now that I've started watching anime there's just a lot of these very basic phrases I hear a lot like because I just saw one here uh wait oh. yeah here it says it's been a long time or a long time no see uh ohi oh, 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 this that's one that I've heard several times in anime and that's it's really nice because it's like a full phrase and it was really nice that I could actually pick up on it. Uh, Daijobides is also one that I've heard a lot so that's really cool. Gomen Nasai obviously. Uh, some phrase for how like 
you can ask if uh, how, what a word is in Japanese or what it is in English, how to say you like something, um, the singular pronouns, there. how you can use adjectives and how you can conjugate verbs, some location particles, uh, how you can say the stuff about time. And that's really all my notes so far, so that's really not that much, so revising this shouldn't really take too long. It's not actually all the grammar stuff that's in the first book, because there is like a list somewhere of how you classify like certain type of objects, how you can count them, and it's it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, found it. This is like how you can count stuff and there's just so many different words because you have a row for counting general slash abstract objects, small slash round general objects, long slash cylindrical objects, thin and flat objects, so and these have all different counting words, so it's just so many I don't really know if they're in the memorized course. I think I'm gonna check if they're in there because it's one of the last lessons in the book so I haven't really gotten to that point I think so I'm not sure if it's in the course but otherwise I should probably make like flashcards for it or something because yeah there's no way I'm otherwise gonna remember it because it's so many and it's just like a bit confusing when to classify a word is like a cylindrical object or whatever especially here for like long and cylindrical objects like there's some pictures of like examples and like the pencil I get that that's long and cylindrical and a candle but like a tree wouldn't necessarily like well I guess the stem obviously but I don't know my my first thought wouldn't really be long and cylindrical for a tree I guess for most tree at least and a hand, apparently. Or is it a finger? I don't know. It's probably a finger. Yeah, that makes more sense. I don't know. Maybe now that I'm actually looking at all the pictures, it, it it's not that strange. But I don't know. It's just something that I'm going to have to revise a lot, I think. So far, I've kind of neglected it, this. This was because this book. Overall, it was very simple, like very accessible, and I never really felt overwhelmed except for this like single page where with like counting objects. That was the only time I was like, uh, oh, I don't know, this is so much information at once. And so, kind of like, I did the exercises for it, I think, but I didn't really study those words. I kind of skipped it so far. So, I think I should probably do that at this point. I just checked memorize and actually the words for counting objects are in the memorize course so I don't really need to make like separate flashcards which is really nice and I'm actually much farther with the memorize course than I thought it was because I thought it was like halfway through but I've done like I've learned like 500 out of the 700 words or something so that's really not too bad it really shouldn't take me too long to finish so once my internet is working better I'm also going to continue with that one but for now I'm just going to do a little bit from the Japanese From Zero to book. I already started it this last year but a few weeks ago I kind of restarted it from the beginning because it had been so long and I've kind of forgotten everything so I actually already filled out some bits a bit further on than where I am at but I'm just going to continue where I left off like a few weeks ago uh, which is just in the first lesson actually um, I'll just briefly once again flip through the like explanations that I've read so far just to reacquaint myself with it but I'm not really going to spend too much time on it because I also want to get to new stuff
Borid words in katakana are like maybe one of my favorite parts of learning Japanese because it's just so much fun to like figure out like because some words are very obvious but for some words I really have to think like okay this is a borrowed word but what word did they borrow and I always think it's really fun to like figure out what word it is In the second book there were a bit more errors than the first book. I didn't, I don't think I noticed any errors in the first book at all. But here every now and then I'll see something. But I do still really love these books. They're so like accessible and fun I think. So yeah, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't really bother me too much. At the end of my jotter I've also started to make a, like this is very short, um, but I started to make a list of verbs and I've written like behind it when it's not regular. I think I have somewhat a way longer list of verbs um, which were all regular but I don't, I think it's just on my stack of like notes and stuff so I'm gonna copy those at some point into this notebook as well because it's just really nice to have like a long list of verbs I can like conjugate because like it is so far really easy the conjugation of the verbs but I think like when you're gonna have to think about polite forms and all that it's probably gonna get much more difficult but we'll see Even writing like just those few characters are really nice is that I definitely need to practice my writing because I'm so quite good at like recognizing hiragana because I've been doing so much duolingo but just to write the characters myself it feels very wonky I don't know and for some of the characters I can't really quite remember like the stroke order like for se I'm not entirely sure if I wrote it correctly it sort of looks all right but I don't know so I'm gonna have to practice my writing a bit more maybe I can do some like entries in my language diary I uh, but I don't know I'm just gonna have to find some like really simple sentences to write because so far I can't say like very complex things in Japanese this is apparently how far I've gotten like the last time I revised so I'm almost ready to continue. Where was your grandfather? He was with my grandmother. Asoko ni imashita. He was over there. Kuruma wa doko ni arimasu ka? Where is the car? Asoko ni arimasu. It is over there. Hotel wa doko ni arimasu. Ah, hotel wa doko ni arimashita ka? Where was the hotel? Kawasaki shi. Kawasaki shi ni arimashita. It was in Kawasaki City. So right now I'm on page 36 and I've gotten to the part where they teach you how to write katakana because the first book focuses on hiragana and the second book teaches you katakana. And it's kind of good that because like I've before even starting the first book I'd already started to learn hiragana and katakana but it's kind of good that I'm once again like that I have to uh, write katakana here because especially katakana my katakana writing is very bad like with the hiragana characters I still have somewhat of an idea of how to write them but with the katakana characters it's much more fuzzy so I definitely need some practice so I think the last thing that I'm gonna do now is just practice writing a bit because uh, I have to leave in a bit so yeah that's what I'm gonna do today and maybe tonight I'm gonna have a bit of time and then I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start a new anime 
probably Full Metal Alchemist maybe, I don't know, or I'll see what else is on Netflix because I know that one is on Netflix so um, I've always, and I've heard like several people say good things about it, Intellect Grime also mentioned it so I definitely feel like I should give it a chance and also because it's kind of like fantasy like or something and I do love love fantasy so I think I'm gonna watch that tonight and that's gonna be my Japanese practice for today I think or maybe just do a little bit of Duolingo later on if the internet is working again because I've also like in the morning I did some Duolingo and I got to level 15 because one of my goals uh, level 14 because one of my goals this summer was for Japanese on Duolingo to get to level 16 so I'm actually almost there uh, well like the higher you go the more uh, like points you need to actually level up so it's still gonna be <laughs> quite a bit of work but it's only one more level so that should definitely be doable this summer so yeah that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the night um, I won't be able to film much anymore so yeah that's going to be my Japanese session for today. Let me know in the comments how your language studies are going and maybe we'll see you next time. Bye!